Hey guys and welcome back and today I thought I'd make a video about how to get started on Krita because most people can't afford Photoshop. I've heard online and on comments that people don't use Krita because they don't know how to get started on it and it's actually not that hard it's just it takes a bit of effort because it doesn't have as many resources as for example Photoshop because it's a lot more well known but Krita is pretty much free you know you don't need to pay anything whereas Photoshop you have to pay a monthly fee and most people can't afford that. So the first thing you need to do is go on their website and download it and you have the, either the 64 bit or the 32 bit and whichever one you can just do that so when you first start you will get onto the page like this and you basically have to click new file and when you do that this little screen pops up where you can choose orientation you want it so landscape or portrait if you want a predefined one for example a3 a4 and that's pretty useful if you want to print something but if you're not then you can pretty much just use the numbers that are already there and I try to use 300 ppi which just means pixels per inch so when you do that you will get a blank screen or the blank piece of paper and you can basically get started drawing on that so the first thing is you should do is on the little docker where it says layers you have to click the little plus button in the square because I don't know if you know this or not, but you should never ever ever draw on the background layer. You should always draw on a layer on top of that because it makes it a lot easier to edit because the layer one is pretty much completely opaque. It's completely white opaque and the other ones on top are see-through and you always want to draw on a layer on top of it. Then on top of that you have the advanced colour selector and on that you pretty much have the colours of the rainbow on there. So, as you can see there's a triangle in the middle and then you have a circle so you move the slider around on the circle to get whatever hue you want and then inside you can make it darker lighter less saturated more saturated depending which side which corner of the triangle you go to then you have the brush presets that's basically where you have all your brushes and braces and pencils and everything so you because I've made my own little group, you just go on to all, so that's the one that you would usually have. And on there you have the airbrushes, you have pens, and you have pencils, and you have stamps, and so many things. There are so many things, but at the start you do not need to use all of them. You can just use the first three rows, because that's pretty much what you'll need. You'll need a racer, you'll need a round soft brush, round hard brush, and you can pretty much make anything with that. So that's what you want to do and what I like to use is this little brush which has it, it's got like a picture of a white pen on it because it changes opacity depending on how much you press it gets smaller when you don't put too much pressure and thicker when you do so that's what I like to use then I'm going to just show you how you can use the layers and why you should never ever ever draw on the background layer so as you can see I've drawn a rudimentary stick drawing of a cherry and behind that I just added some color and as you can see it doesn't affect the cherry you can draw behind it and it will show through but now I've drawn on the background layer so on layer one and now even though I've put a layer behind it it won't show through because layer one is just like a piece of paper and anything that you draw underneath is not going to come through because it's going to block everything so always make sure you draw on a layer on top of the background layer then on the left hand side you have the toolbar and on there you have the paintbrush tool which is the one we were just using then you have the line tool which makes straight lines and then if you want to you know completely opaque background just use the paint bucket tool and then that will just make the whole background one color or you want to make a gradient for example a sunset then what you do is you go onto the gradient tool and you just drag it whichever way you want the gradient to be and if you want to change the colors so if you want two colors in your gradient and as you can see on the top part there is two boxes of colors and you click on the top one and then you can change that color so as you can see I'm doing that right now I'm just choosing a color and you press ok and then you choose the next box so the second box and then you choose a color for that and that's basically your two colors for your gradient that you will need so you can either choose from the palette on the side that they have already got loads of colors on there or you can just make your own color with the color selector which is a triangle with a circle around it and then you just do the same thing and depending on how much pressure you put you'll either get a light gradient 
like more see-through or you'll get a gradient that's more opaque so more dark and as you can see it's the pink that i've chosen it's not showing too much but it's very very light and the next tool that you will need the transform tool so let's say i've drawn a circle and i want to change it so you click on the transform tool and you can just make it bigger or smaller that's the basics but if you go onto the tool options you have these other boxes and if you click the second one that's the perspective so if you're looking at something in perspective and you want to change it that's really useful then you have the nine point tool so that's basically if you want to change something more specifically and then it's the three point tool which is basically you can put your own points and then you change it which is i haven't found use for it but i'm pretty sure it's very useful and then then you have the liquify tool which is what you've probably known even if you've never been on photoshop you know there's a liquify tool on photoshop so there's one on creator as well in case you want to use them and that's i think about it because that's pretty much what you need to get started and if you guys want a part two on more in-depth tool on the tools that are already there or the tool i've already shown you then give a like and i'll make another one and there are loads of tools i'm still learning even i still don't know every single thing that's in creator and i think that's pretty amazing for something that's free it's jam-packed with so much stuff that you can do with it so thank you for watching hope you have a great day and i'll see you guys again next time bye